Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, my name is Meg Coates and this channel is all about DIY, home, renovations and interior design. This video is a Q&A video about my home renovation. So I popped up a poll on Instagram and I've gone through some of the questions that I get in my DMs and I thought I would just make a Q&A video instead. Okay, so my first question is when are you going to finish the garden? I know in the summer I had a lot of people uh, very interested in our garden journey and that we grew our own grass from seeds. So there were a lot of people following that journey and then it kind of just stopped, <laughs> mainly because winter arrived. So we will be finishing the garden, not this year because there's only a few days left of December, but we will be finishing the garden once we've had the full renovation done on the bungalow, which fingers crossed will be the end of summer next year, but we can't be too sure. So yeah, that's when we will be finishing the garden. And I'll tell you what, I've been putting, I've been using this rendering system online to kind of like visualize what the garden would look like. And I'll pop these up here now so that you can kind of see the plans for the garden in the future and what we intend to do. Number two, why did you move from your first house? So we bought our first home in 2017. It was a new build, mid terrace with a tiny garden. It was perfect for our first home. It was um, because we used to help to buy skis our outgoings were low, uh, it needed no work so we didn't need to spend any money on it. However, we were just kind of outgrowing it a little bit. The area wasn't um, where we kind of like wanted to set our roots down. So we actually decided to move very, very suddenly. So I was running my business and I was making home products and honestly we were outgrowing our old home so quickly. And I really wanted to move back to um, an area that I'd moved before. We saw the bungalow, we were like, oh my God, should we move? Like we literally could move. So we went and viewed it and put an offer in straight away. And it was really kind of like, spare of the moment. We, we had no intentions of moving pretty much. It was kind of just like an idea. Um, but yeah, it was just pretty much the size and the location. Um, and then the bungalow's massive compared and it's in the perfect location. So yeah, it was a no brainer really. Is the bungalow your forever home? So with the bungalow now, we have currently got plans in planning permission awaiting to be uh, consulted on. So we're not really sure whether we will get planning permission or not. And um, we think if we get planning permission and we can design and reconstruct the bungalow to look like this, then we are pretty sure that we will be here for a long, long time. Is it our forever home? We can't really say. I would. I, I know what I'm like. I love change and I love renovations and everything like that. So I know, I know I'm gonna wanna move. Whether we will act on that, I don't know. But yeah, if we get planning permission, we will not be moving for at least 10 years. If we don't get planning permission, we are gonna just renovate the bungalow to a certain standard, live here for a few years, and then we will definitely be moving on because it won't be what we always wanted. But the planning permission, is if we get that that is something that we will have we will love and it's kind of like down to a T what we want so it really does depend on whether we get planning permission or not but we really want planning permission we really want to stay here like I said we love the area so I'm fingers crossed that we get planning and then we can stay here for a long long time what are your plans for the conservatory? I haven't seen any DIYs in there. So the conservatory is huge. If you'd seen it on any of my other videos, you'll see that it's literally just a dumping ground. Um, and that's our plans for it. We are literally gonna continue using it as a dumping ground. It leaks in the rain. It's too hot in the summer. It's too cold in the winter. It leaks, it's like, it's, oh, it's just not ideal. It is a horrible space. So I, I was thinking, oh, I could DIY. I could put like um, faux leaves on the roof and put like nice lights to make it feel like indoor outdoory. I could paint all the like, UPVC black and or I could pan all the sides of it. It's not worth it. So we are literally just gonna stay stick with it as it is until we get 
the rhino, whether that be with permitted development or with planning permission, but it will be going. That will be the first thing to come down. So yeah, we're really looking forward to get rid of it because it's just not our friend. We really don't like it. How are your black radiators holding up and what was the paint that you used? They're brilliant. We've had no problems with the black radiators at all. I love them, they look good, they're easy to clean. We used Rust-Oleum all-purpose paint in matte black. And then upstairs I used Rustin Satin Black. So I think if I was to do them all again, I would definitely go with satin. Nothing wrong with the matte. I just, I'm just leaning towards satin finish nowadays because it is so much more practical than a matte black. So um, radiators doors are all matte at the moment, but I will be hopefully buying the same paint but in a satin finish, the Rust-Oleum one, and popping a satin over them. Well, actually, I probably won't bother now, but um, because we're waiting for the Renault. But if we weren't waiting for the Renault, that's probably what I would do. The radiators are totally fine, but the doors do really need that satin finish to be able to be wipeable and things like that. But the radiators look great. Um, you can put washing on them and nothing transfers off. They are holding up really, really well. So if you're thinking about doing it, I would definitely recommend, but maybe I would recommend a satin finish over a matte black. What is your favorite room in the bungalow? So, I've got two rooms, one being the bathroom because it is the only room that we've fully renovated and you know it, it does have that extra special touch to it and I do absolutely love it so um, that has got to be one of my favourite rooms. The only issue I've got with it is there are lots of snags still there that we haven't picked up yet so like the architraves need replacing, we need to put coving up which we haven't done yet, um, we need to re-silicone everything because after about a year it does end up looking a little bit grubby so we need to do that it also needs a new window and the bung uh, the bathroom is freezing so for those reasons I'm gonna say that our old bedroom new living room is by far my favorite room panel the walls we've got you know thick curtains in there the TVs in there it's a real cozy room that we absolutely like love spending time in i love the parquet floor that we put down in there i love the color on the walls um again there's so many snags that we need to finish in that room as well but there's no point now because we are having the um renovation so if we weren't i would have done the snags ages ago um but because we are going to be getting rid of that room regardless really um probably taking it back to brick and getting everything brand new in there um, there's no point me finishing the snags but even with the snags i think that's my favorite room number seven will you do another renovation um absolutely so i know we haven't really done like a full reno yet so i might change my mind after this because i think we're gonna have to move out if we get planning permission in order for the works to be done because it's just so much so so far we've just been living amongst renovating which has been nice it's been easy and um, it was hard when the builders were into the bathroom because there's only one bathroom so we had to go up to like the village hotel to use the bathroom and the shower so that was a bit difficult but i just think the value that you get out of doing a renovation it's just second to none like it is so worth the pain the financial gain from it and having the house of your dreams exactly what you want i think it is really really worth doing renovations so i think if we moved i would be looking for a full renovation um i'd probably sell this rent somewhere whilst looking for our next reno and then we could get the reno done i'd ideally look for something that doesn't need planning permission so that we can just get started straight away and then live in a in a rental for a year well give us that because it's this is what we're finding at the moment is we want to rent somewhere for the, this renovation but it's only going to be about six months so trying to find a short-term rental is really difficult so if we did sell a bungalow move into a rental um in that time then we can like buy a another renovation and renovate it whilst being in one year agreements what is your biggest regret about the reno so far there are a few different regrets. Um, I think the biggest one for me, but it's kind of like we had to do it in order to borrow more money. So for me, like spending so much money on making up every room and the bathroom, spending so much money on the bathroom, 
um, before getting architects drawings. I think that's my biggest regret because we've like renovated and then like in hindsight, the stairs would be perfect where the bathroom is. So if we hadn't spent so much money on it, then we might be more open to moving the bathroom around even though we spent a bit of money on it. Um, but what we did need to do was add value to the bungalow so that we could borrow more off the mortgage company to finish the renovation. So it's kind of like, if we had the money, then I would have regretted um, starting the, the renovation before the architect drawings. But because we needed to add value to borrow more, it's kind of like not that much of a regret. But I do wish we didn't spend as much money on the bathroom, but it wouldn't have looked as nice as it does. So yeah, are you going to install a log burner? Uh, so I think we definitely will install a log burner. Um, actually, we're not. it really depends on, on whether we get permitted development or planning permission um, because we're not quite sure where, where we'll be sitting because we're not sure what the plans are. So I would love to get a log burner, but if it doesn't work out, um, I'll be happy with an electric fire, I think. So um, because the good thing with log burners is, yes, they're great, but logs are expensive and it does smell. Um, so yeah, I think that's what we'll do. Have you decided where you're gonna get your kitchen from? So we haven't decided where we're gonna get our kitchen from yet. We have been working closely with Ren and we are really happy with Ren. It's just the price is a bit on the expensive side, but we are enjoying Ren. I wouldn't mind having an Ikea kitchen. Um, but yeah, so far it looks like we're leaning towards Ren, just be kind of like the, the style that they've got and the service that they provide. Um, Cause like Howden's, I don't even know how to contact Howden's. I hope you enjoyed this video guys. If you've got any more questions for me, I'm happy to do a part two. Just comment down below and I can do a part two for you. If you like these type of videos, if you like things about DIY renovations, interiors and all things home, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the bell button to get notifications. Or if you don't wanna subscribe, then please just drop me a like or a comment for making it this far. So I will see you in the next video.